so uh, last time we started the basic principles of finite element method. So today we are actually going through an exercise of uh, figuring out how to actually uh, how it actually works in real mathematics and in real computer program. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's review what we have discussed last lecture. So finite elements works in a very different way as uh, from uh, finite difference or finite volume. It doesn't discretize a differential equation like in finite difference directly. It also doesn't differentiate a integral form as in finite volume, like an integral conservative form. So what does it discretize? Uh, the energy conserving version of the... Yes, it, it discretizes either something called an energy, right? Which actually the solution of the differential equation minimizes. Or it dis discretizes, we're going to see its equivalent, or it discretizes a variational version of the energy minimization statement. And that variational version is called a weak form of the differential equation. So uh, today we're going to basically go through several examples to show that they are actually pretty much the same. Okay, so the idea is that in the energy form, we have written down uh, energy, which is a scalar function of the solution U. And we can derive that the differential equation, solving the differential equation is equivalent of finding a function U, which satisfies the boundary conditions and minimizes that particular energy. And what does finite element do? Is finite element restricts U to be in a particular linear functional space or with a notation of something called the basis, which is a collection of finitely many functions. It, we can equivalent say that we restrict U to be a certain linear combination of all these basis functions. So u is a function of x, it's a linear combination of these basis functions. So we are restricting uh, ourselves from considering all possible functions to considering all possible functions that satisfy such a form. So that reduces the problem from an infinite dimensional problem that we don't know how to solve to a finite, actually n-dimensional problem that now we're going to show we know how to solve. So by doing this restric restriction, the problem turns into a minimization over a1, a2, etc., an. The e of u of a. So let me just uh, write it down. E of a uh, summation of a i times phi i. Okay, so that's simple. Or equivalently, you can write down the energy form as a weak form. So the weak form is something like uh, find a u such that uh, u sa satisfies something like this. It satisfies a integral, okay, of a delta u. Uh, let me just uh, write down a general form. So it satisfies a certain now okay so let, let me say again so e is a univariate function in, in a sense that is a function of a single function right it's univariate functional so this a if you take a variation on this e you get a bivariate functional u of uh, a of u and delta u okay that uh, has to be let me just write this is equal to zero for all possible delta u's, right? So basically, this small a is a small perturbation on this big E when you per perturb u by a infinitesimal multiple of delta u, all right? Does that make sense? So that is actually the weak form of a differential equation. So you can go from here to here by taking variation on the energy and you can go from the differential equation to this, usually by 
multiplying the differential equation with delta u and integrate by parts. Okay, so that's what we did uh, last lecture. So, so if you, if you do this, then you can also uh, uh, the the next steps are equivalent. So what you do is restrict u of x be, uh, to be a linear combination of the basis functions, and you also restrict delta u of x to be a potentially different linear combination of the basis functions, right? So let me write it as a, a bj times vj of x. Okay, and then the equation a of summation a i phi i summation b j phi j has to be equal to zero for all possible collection of b j's. All right. So basically, here, uh, here you have a minimization statement. Here I have, well, infinitely many equations for n unknowns. But these infinite many equations are not independent. We're going to see that out of these all possible bj's, you can basically choose n possible combinations. And all the other equations can be just a linear combination of these n equations. OK, so, so that's basically how these two approaches uh, derive essentially the same equations. Yes? Can you explain again how that's equivalent many equations? That's because that equation has to be 0 for all possible bj's. Right. OK. And it turns out these equations for linear finite elements are actually linear functions of these bj's. So because of that, you can basically, if you have n uh, of this set of bj's, for example, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, you can do linear combination of them to get any of these, to satisfy any of these equations. All right. OK. Or you can also derive the green equation from over here right so um, so you can also derive these equations from here by taking a small perturbation to these AJ, AIs and the small perturbation to these AIs are actually these BJs right so so basically if you take derivative of this E with respect to each of these AIs you actually get these equations Okay, so, so this is kind of in general uh, how finite elements works in both approaches, in the weak form and in the energy minimization form. So I know it may be look confusing from here, right? Uh, but let's actually dive into some specific examples and uh, make it less confusing. <laughs>